By now, you've likely heard of the hugely popular podcast, Missing Richard Simmons. It was my rave several weeks back, but now the podcast itself is coming under scrutiny for what some see as not so much an attempt to solve a mystery, but rather a plain old invasion of privacy. Hi, everybody. For decades, Richard Simmons was a TV staple. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, uh, the one, the only, Richard Simmons. Come on out. Simmons' flamboyant outfits, zany humor, and genuine caring for people made him a media sensation, a sensation that came to an abrupt halt three years ago. We are going to dig into some of the clues from the days and weeks before he disappeared that might give us a sense of what happened to Richard after that. That's Dan Taberski, freelance journalist and host of the Missing Richard Simmons podcast. He reaches out to friends and family, and people like Kathy, a one-time 450-pound hairdresser in Nebraska, who Simmons called every week. All of a sudden, Richard Simmons jumps in my life, who is full of color, and I feel suddenly hope. Missing Richard Simmons is a national hit, earning Dan Taberski an interview with Yahoo's Katie Couric. If you spend 40 years absorbing other people's problems, maybe that's dangerous. So decades of being so empathetic might have taken a toll. But Couric wondered if maybe it's just none of our business. What if he just... Vons to be alone like Greta Garbo. (laughs) Why don't you leave him alone? But Taberski insists he's not crossing any lines. When that person stops being that person, I think it's worth asking the question why. But New York Times arts critic Amanda Hess finds Taberski's rationale questionable, calling it, in part, a morally suspect exercise, an invasion of privacy masquerading as a love letter. Possibly. But inquiring minds just might want to know for the right reasons. Well, when I first did a rave on this, I got some pushback, including for one of my colleagues, Adam Riley, who I respect tremendously. He used the word skeety. He said he got antsy listening to it. It made him uncomfortable that he felt he was, you know, participating in an unnecessary invasion of privacy. I have to say, wherever you stand on this, this is really well done. And it follows basically all the tenets of good journalism. I mean, it's well researched. It's well thought out. The characters that he pulls into this are all real and genuine and part of Richard's intimate life, or were at one, one time. Um, as, as far as whether it's an invasion of privacy, you know, I, I came away with the sense that, that there was a reason to care about him. Whether, I mean, it was uncomfortable with all the speculation, I have to say. I didn't, I didn't, he, and he kept kind of throwing that out there for listeners. What do you think? What do you think? I didn't go for that. But I came away basically caring about what happened to this man. And that's not something you can say about everything that you get involved in in terms of a listener or a reader. I, I have to say, I, I, uh, I, I, I don't find it offensive. Uh, in some ways, I think what uh, he has done is sensitively done. The Kathy, the voice that we mm. heard and plays a big part in it, um, it is such a tribute to the way that Richard Simmons uh, cared about her off camera. This mm-hmm. wasn't Richard yeah. Simmons that was trying to, in many ways, exploit that relationship. Uh, I think in a lot of ways this is... Uh, the kind of thing we might think of as a, a eulogy to someone who is still living. Mm-hmm. Um, and there may be something sad there, there may not be. It reminded me uh, a, a good bit about the speculation surrounding uh, the Beach Boys, uh, Brian mm. uh, Wilson. Wilson, and uh, what had happened to him Howard Hughes. He went through. <laughs> well, Howard Hughes, uh, in, in some way, although yeah. I don't think Howard, well, Howard Hughes did seek celebrity. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, there does perhaps reach a point mm. because we don't know where it's going to go and what is the end of this where you do tend to feel a little bit nervous about it but by and large I have to say I think what has been done here is a tribute to Richard Simmons. One thing that struck me is what you just brought up about the the presentation of the side of Simmons that he had really kept off camera and that's what made it made me feel like we were exploiting something. Mm -hmm. Um, He kept his conversations with Kathy private for a reason. They, he didn't want the public to be involved with them. I think um, it feels a little bit like 
like a celebrity crush gone wrong. Now, now you've invited everyone else to peer in the window and to share your obsession, and you feel justified because now they're interested. Therefore, it's okay for you to keep asking intrusive questions or to keep asking the same questions in some cases over and over. But it squicked me out a little bit. What was that word? That squicked. Squicked. <laughs> yes. squicked. Yes. squicked. Yes. We've got skeedy. We've got squicked. Yeah. All right. There you go. Uh, I have to confess, I've only listened to a few minutes of right. one episode. Um, it does strike me as a pretty unwarranted invasion of privacy, uh, no matter how well done it is. The episode that I had uh, the, the pleasure of listening to a bit was speculating on whether um, he's tra whether Richard oh, yeah. Simmons is transitioning to a woman. Uh, well, without any evidence or information or participation by Richard Simmons, that is nobody's business. I'm sorry. And it just sounded like rank speculation anyway. Uh, well, I, there was some reason to consider it. I mean, well, it was, he didn't just pull it out of a hat. Okay. I mean, th I think that what I found the oddest about it was that it followed all of the, um, it, it felt like serial. And yes. even, even the way the host kind of talks the way Sarah it's a formula. talks. I said the same thing, yeah. Um, and, but, you know, this does not rise to the level of, of Serial, certainly not the first yeah. season of Serial. I didn't listen to Serial. I wasn't interested for different reasons that we could get into later. I think this is fascinating. And, you know, I'm all about being in everybody else's business, but I will admit to that, you know, so let me just start there. But having said that, this to me is actually a news story. This guy was very involved at every stage of his life. Um, even that conversation that was not shared by others, but she knew it. Uh, other people would always, while he was out, come forward and say, you know, Richard calls mm -hmm. me. So it wasn't that he didn't know that people were sharing these mm -hmm. other off-camera things. For him to not show up. You know, there's a way if you want to be step out, if he had just said, listen, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't even want to appear on camera to say that. So this is a letter from my lawyer. Mm -hmm. You guys love you, but I'm done now. I then I'm saying, leave him alone. That's invasion of privacy. But he didn't show up. The stuff they're posting on Facebook is from years ago. It's clearly not from him. Mm -hmm. Something is weird. Mm -hmm. And it's very quite possible that he made a change in his life. I'm just finished a great book called The Stranger in the Woods about a guy that dropped out at 20. He knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to talk to anybody, but that's how he was his whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. this is not Richard Simmons. Something is going on here. And if... And the way that he's presenting it, I just don't think it's skeevy, skevy, whatever. I just think <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. <laughs>